<laughs> Welcome everyone to another Learn Life session, Life on Learn TV. Uh, my name is Thomas Maurer and I'm here with my boss, manager, friend and beer expert, Rick Claus. Hi, Rick. Hey, Thomas. Thanks for having me, man. This is going to be an interesting one. It's about backup and restores. Is that about right? Is that what we're talking about today? Yep. Absolutely. Yep. I'm happy that um, we're going to both talk about the same thing tonight. So um, the Learn Life or the Learn module uh, on Microsoft Learn uh, we're going to talk about today and we're going to through, go through today uh, is called Implement Hybrid Backup and Recovery with Windows Server IaaS. And you can obviously follow us live directly on this Learn module here directly on Learn TV, YouTube or wherever you're watching. But you can also open this Learn module up right now and actually join us uh, when we go through this. Yeah, right? we got so, that short link, or you can also go through and use the QR code. One or the other will get you to the right spot. I will ask that you do sign in because then you can get points and actually build up your profile for what's going on. I noticed at the beginning of this, before we were getting ready for this, you're like a level 12 or something like that, man. That's crazy. I'm only like level seven. I've got more yeah. to do on here. Yeah, I, I did not even notice. I don't even know if it's good, but assume that you like that not that high, and I think it's good. So uh, we can definitely um, uh, compete a little bit. I would be happy if people also, by the way, if you're watching and you have like a lot of points and done a lot of learn modules and like you have different levels, feel free to share them uh, and oh, tell yeah. us what you're doing. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Rick, shall we go into and have a look at the module? Um, because we also, by the way, just to mention before we jump into this, we also prepared, obviously, a couple of demos for you to actually go through this stuff, uh, which is mentioned in the Learn module. Yeah, but I, I, I don't know if you noticed, but the last time I did the demos, my demo failed because it was a video capability that I was using, which just was not good for some reason. So I'm coming to you with live demos this time to have some fun with it. Uh, so that'll be fun. Uh, and yourself, are you doing videos? You're doing live demos as well? What are you doing? Of course I'm going live. I mean, I have to, like, there's no no way I'm going to do like recorded stuff. No, it's just obviously recordings can help, but uh, today we're going to do all of the stuff yeah. live. Um, so that's, that's a good thing, I guess. And, and the, the, the interesting part about this being Learn Live is that we're being streamed to about three or four, or maybe even five different endpoints. And so if you do have questions, you do have stuff you want to chat about, please make this interactive. I mean, I love talking with Thomas. He's an awesome guy to talk with. But we also like to hear from folks that are inside the different various chat rooms. If you're joining us on Learn TV, there's a technology or a, a plugin that we have for the chat you can go off and use. You can directly engage with us as well. Wherever you happen to be watching on the YouTubes or on uh, stream elements, sorry, not stream elements, on, uh, on uh, Twitch or wherever it happens to be, go off and say hello. Because I can already see, you know, my good friend Andrew McCallum is saying hello. Uh, from the UK side of things, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's from the UK. So over there in the Europe's. Yep, yep. Must be late for Andrew. Uh, must be late for him. So uh, we definitely don't want to disappoint him uh, when we talk today about backup. And I think that is also brings us directly into the module or the learn sure. module itself. Um, backup, obviously, a very, very important topic for a lot of like IT administrators or if you're in IT, um, basically for everyone, <laughs> backup, mm -hmm. even if you're a developer or even if you're not in IT, um, backup should be absolutely on your list of things to do. Uh, but we're going to have a special look today at um, Azure Backup and how you can leverage that to do um, backup on your Windows servers, but mm -hmm. not only in Azure, right? We're also going to look at the hybrid side of things and so like the, how you can leverage azure backup for your windows servers running in your own data center or edge location right um one thing that's interesting is while you're going through these different learn modules a uh, little hint if you are actually trying to search and find all those different points you can get you do have to visit every single one of those pages and scroll down to the bottom and then hit the next button to, to continue or take those individual different uh quizzes that might happen to pop up to be able to claim those points. I only mention this because I saw that Thomas was getting sloppy and hadn't claimed the first set of points yet uh, oh. or has not completed them all. So he will at least complete them during the course of this Learn Live session to make sure he collects all the points because all the Absolutely. points. Absolutely. Definitely. <laughs> So, so in this case, we're going to be going through our lovely fam our lovely uh, process of backup and recovery um, with different types of things, specifically in a hybrid and also inside of an in in a um, 
in a pure Azure world for being able to do some backups of stuff. Uh, we'll be talking about policies. We'll be talking about recoveries as well. Uh, we'll be able to talk about how to manage those backups and enable them on a variety of different types of machines. Uh, all that sort of stuff happens to be there. Prerequisites wise, like I, you built your demo, just, just out of curiosity, there's a video at the end of this module you can watch if you're interested. But even with the free trial of, of Azure, you can actually set up a backup using Azure Backup and install the appropriate things. I'm not going to give away what they are because Thomas is talking about that. To be able to back up even like lab machines you might have inside of your environment. Or you could go ahead and like I did, because my half of the, the demos that I'm doing are all inside of Azure. I just spun up a couple of VMs and went through the backup process up there too. So you can get some really easy hands-on. It's not very complex to set up. Uh, if you understand the basics of creating VMs and then installing agents on them, you're set to go basically. Absolutely, absolutely. There is not much like if you're already a Windows Server administrator, um, you probably already have things ready and uh, ready to go. And so you can try it out and make sure that that actually works. Right. Um, so absolutely. So before we actually dive in into the next part, let's have a look at the different uh, units here. Uh, we're going to have a look uh, today. So definitely we're going to have a look at the <laughs> introduction where we actually like talk a little bit about backup in general. Right. Um, and then Obviously, for those who haven't really heard, we're going to have to look at um, Azure Backup it, in general, right? Um, like, what is it? Like, what are the terms? And explain that a little bit, that you understand when can you actually use Azure Backup? Because, Rick, I don't know about you, but like when I speak to a lot of people, when I talk about Azure Backup, they think, well, this is only for like stuff in Azure, right? Mm -hmm. It's great. You can use it for, and, and that's true. You can use it for stuff in Azure. But again, as I said before, it's also something you can leverage um, to run it on prem um, and backup, like for example, long term data to Azure as well. Absolutely. And then obviously, we have to talk about recovery vaults because that's where the configurations and the policies are stored. Uh, and then how to create those policies so that it applies on a regular basis. There's a bit of a nuance there that you'll learn about between the on prem version and the Azure version as far as doing policies are concerned. Uh, how to recover individual machines, how to recover files off of those. Obviously, you always want to try some recoveries to make sure you understand how they work in a non-pressure basis. And then when you are under pressure, you know exactly what's going on. Uh, and then going through and doing some backup and restore of the on-premises world. And then finally, managing those virtual machine backups with the different backup service, doing some reporting on them and things like that, uh, and then going through. And so I think that's where, Casey, this is, this is interesting. Because scroll down to the bottom there. You're only missing the points because you haven't done the knowledge check. So we'll do the knowledge check together to make sure that Thomas gets all of his points <laughs> and gets the questions answered correctly. And then he gets awarded the missing points that he needs to have for this. Sounds like a plan, Rick. Sounds like awesome, a plan. Man. Good. Let's uh, have a look at the introduction part. Um, and again, this is just to get you a little bit of a feeling what we can actually do with the Azure Backup service and why also Azure Backup or general backup is important, right? And we always have these cool scenarios. In this case, we have our favorite company again, or at least my favorite company. Well, I, directly I, after I, like, I like how you said cool scenarios. <laughs> <laughs> I think it might be putting too much energy into this. <laughs> No, but it's it's like it's good to like to realize okay what when would I use this right and right. so like there's like Contoso uh, again like I can stress don't stress it enough uh, this is probably my favorite or my second favorite company in the world at least <laughs> um, directly after Microsoft um, to work for and they obviously want to leverage Azure Backup to do some of their backups uh, for the Windows IaaS VMs running in Azure, but then also to do file backups um, in case of disasters and stuff like that uh, for their on-prem Windows servers. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we already went through the learning objectives in the introduction piece, so it's just simply copied here for your reference. Uh, but uh, you know, the interesting thing here is that some of the nuances they call out in that particular scenario talks about that the current the Contoso currently uses your traditional on-premises tape backups for restores. Remember tapes? Woohoo, those were fun. Um, and then we're going to be looking at how to implement recovery vaults, backup policies, and then impl implement them across both VMs and Azure, and also uh, VMs inside of the uh, uh, VMs and physical machines inside of your on-premises world. Yeah, yeah, that that was like great times. I remember when I when I first started in IT, we had like uh, obviously we had the short-term backup 
from like again file servers mostly, but then also like applications obviously and stuff like that. Yeah. We put them on a disk on a server with lot, lots and lots of disk, right? So we had a short term backup, and then what we called the long term backup that was really done on tapes, right? And yeah. I remember we had to like obviously every day the, the tape has to be changed. And they were like in the larger companies, we had like uh, automatic machines doing that. But then for smaller companies, they always like was one person actually in the morning going and changing the tape. And then that tape was taken and put into a safe. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also I remember like some like every, I think every month or so, they took one of the tapes and they put it even into a bank, right? That <laughs> it was like, like, ex like an external um, disaster. And, and not just any bank. A Swiss bank because you're in Switzerland, course. so it's of even course. the highest level of capabilities <laughs> that you happen to have inside of that too. Nice, exactly, exactly. But now think about it. Now, now with the cloud, obviously things became way easier uh, with that, right? I mean, instead of having someone doing the, I mean, the short term backup you probably still want to have in your location in in some cases, right? Yeah. Where where that you can redo a fast restore um, uh, without having like using a lot of bandwidth to restore a lot if you have to restore a lot of files. Um, but if you like, like think about long term backup, um, tape handling, maybe not the, the most fun thing to do in the world. Mm -hmm. um, so we can actually leverage the cloud to actually do very long term backups and, and store them in the cloud. I think I'm, if I remember correctly, Rick, I think it's like 99 years retention rate or something like that. But we it's, can absolutely see that in, in the demo then. But yeah, it just it just you can be as creative as you want with these different policies uh, and as customized as you want to have. So definitely for sure. Perfect. Um, the the um, the description of Azure backups. Let's actually go in and dive into this a little bit, man, because we're we're kind of dancing around some of these things. But you know, basically, it is your ability to go through and to uh, basically do away with some of your on-premises tapes if you want to, uh, or start to deprioritize them. Uh, but it allows you to simply protect files and folders on Windows servers and also on client systems uh, that are both on-prem and inside of Azure. Uh, and it all runs through a 64-bit server and client agent or installable that you go in and put on the individual box. Uh, and then it's going to go through and use that to be able to create your long-term storage of backups uh, inside of the Azure world. Uh, but the interesting thing is, and maybe you, should, you can mention a little bit about this, is that it actually ties into, and if you needed to, can tie into the data protection manager if you're using DPM in the on-premises world. Um, yeah. Thoughts yeah. on that, my friend? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, if you're looking at, like, if you already have system center in your environment, right, and you're running data, uh, data protection manager or DPM uh, in your environment to back up things like Exchange or SharePoint, SQL files, VMs, and so on, um, you can actually, like, use a plugin there. Well, it's, it's integrated the latest uh, services, but then um, use that instead of, like, for example, the tapes for the long term backup and actually bring that to, um to azure uh what i also find very cool if you don't have system center um data protection manager in place um and you still want to do all this cool stuff uh, and you don't need the tape part you can actually download our azure backup server um mm -hmm. directly in your environment which is basically a striped down version of system center data protection manager um but you get it actually for free in terms of like of you pay for the backups, but you get it in your environment. You don't have to any have any system center licenses or pay anything up front. Um, and then the only feature which you don't have with this one is actually to do the tape backup, right? So if you decide, mm -hmm. well, I don't even want tapes, I do the short term backup on disk and then the long term backups to Azure, you can absolutely use the Azure backup server uh, right. to do that. And that one works well from a scale perspective as well, too, because you can have multiple different systems protected on premises, all talking to that backup server. And then that backup server is the one that goes up to Azure in case you're worried about your network traffic and that sort of stuff. So it's not a good architectural uh, option you can do for your design for this. Now, an interesting thing that comes up uh, is the, the way that we look after this. Some, some things that we, that we mentioned here in, in the Azure backup offers optional features. The first thing is when someone goes and deletes a backup, there is a 14 day retention policy, even if the deletion happens. I mentioned this only because at the very end of this module, we talk about how obviously ransomware and malware are going in and deleting content and encrypting your hard drives. If a malicious attacker act actually goes in and gains access to your system and then has the ability to go through through your credentials to log in and look at the Azure world, 
uh, and they delete a backup to try to prevent you from restoring your files prior to when they're encrypted, um, you can get notified of a deletion of a backup history, and you can also uh, obviously restore back up to 14 days in case the entire uh, uh, backup scenario for that particular system has been erased from our backup services. So we kind of have this like uh, buffer protection window, if you will, uh, that exists automatically for 14 days, which is very, very good. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense, right? And again, especially these cases, and especially also these ransomware attacks where they obviously, um, like your production data get, uh, sorry, your production data gets yeah. uh, encrypted, for example, and then they obviously want to make sure um, that you don't have any backups to restore. And in this case, um, we, we want to help you to protect that as well. Absolutely. Right. And it's good to note under the benefits and description area inside this one module, in case you're getting asked these questions for why using this. First of all, it's unlimited scaling. You can't run out of space. It's the cloud. So if we run out of space because you run out of space, there's a bigger issue that we got to worry about. <laughs> so basically, it's a pay-as-you-go model. Uh, we're using automatic tiering to make sure that you're trying to stay in the most cost-effective storage that's there. Uh, the one thing that comes up uh, as well is by default, we will be using geo-redundant storage or GRS storage. Uh, you can actually save a bit of cost if you don't need to have geo-redundant storage and change the storage, um, the uh, recovery vault to only use locally redundant storage or LRS instead, uh, in case you needed to save a little bit of money there. Um, and it does have, as I mentioned, long-term retention. I think you brought up the, the point of something like 99 years was one of the configurable options as far as the policy is concerned. Uh, yep. But uh, you know, you, it can be as creative as you want to with that. And then we obviously tie back into this whole concept of a solid backup plan is one part of a business continuity or, or of a recovery plan in case something goes wrong inside of your environment. There are other obvious, there are obviously other things you should be looking at as well, but this is like the, the lock, the, the, the nuts and bolts of basics of what you have to have in place is a good plan that you've tested for being able to back up and restore those critical systems. Yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, you just mentioned like the long-term retention again, right? I think like one interesting conversation that I had was like, okay, well, 99 years is actually a lot. Um, so you will probably have more problems restoring that and actually like using it and finding an application who can still <laughs> read the file format, right? If you've installed like something exotic, I don't know, yeah. like something which is used today, but like 100 years from now, I don't know if I still will be able to open like a specific file format. So that's going right. to be interesting. Um, I also want to add, add two things here when we talk about the, these benefits here. Uh, one is obviously the inbound and outbound data transfer. And obviously, as you can see here, it's basically unlimited. So you can actually put as much in and out as you want. Now, if you're familiar with Azure, you know that like outbound traffic, like so if you, if you get stuff from Azure down to your environment again or yeah. out of, of, of Azure, there's usually a cost in that, right? Uh, with Azure Backup, there is no cost involved in that. That's already right. included in the backup price. So we don't want to like trick you in and say, well, now you need to restore, now pay us, right? You know, you need to pay us more. That's, that's absolutely not the idea uh, yeah. when it comes to backup. Yeah, we're talking, that, that's the uh, egress and ingress. And so there's no egress charges on this. Uh, and we're, yeah. also, we're the demos and the stuff that we're talking about right now is going down the nuts and bolts of virtual machines and physical machines on-premises in Azure. Azure Backup also will work for other services inside of Azure as well, obviously. Different databases, because databases have to be backed up differently. SAP HANA databases have to be backed up differently as well. So a bunch of different stuff is also covered in there. We're only going to be covering the VM side to keep it nice and simple uh, and uh, kind of go from there. Yep. And the next, the only one on this slide, I'm sorry, I want to also quickly mention that we're on this page, uh, is encryption, right? I get asked about this a lot. So mm -hmm. obviously this stuff is encrypted when you back it up to Azure. So I will I will not show you this, but when when you set this up, um, for example, you need to define a key phrase. For example, when you on like back up your on premises data to Azure. Now, this key phrase is needed if like you need to do a restore um, when the server is gone and and you need to take, set up a new server. You need to actually put in that key phrase to encrypt uh, that that data. Uh, if you lose that key phrase, there is no way you will get, we will be able to access it, or you will be able to access it, nor anyone else will be able mm -hmm. to access it. So this is a very crucial part that when you set these things up, uh, keep that in mind as well, that you need to actually make sure that they store your um, key phrase in a safe place. Right. <laughs> Good. Um, so 
we talked already a lot about these things, but I think it's good to highlight this again. How can you actually use Azure Backup and what are the scenarios? Um, I just mentioned before that you can obviously use that on premises. So you can use Azure Backup, not only for Azure, but you can use Azure Backup to backup files uh, and folders in the system state using the, the recovery service agent, or also what we call it in short, the Mars agent, right? It stands for Microsoft Azure Recovery Service agent. So that is something you could use. And this is very handy if you back up one or two servers or you have some uh, machines you want to back up. But as soon as you want to scale, we talked about System Center Data Protection Manager, as well as the Azure Backup Server, which you also can install on-prem. And then you can back up on-premises workloads, um, again, such as uh, SQLs or, or Exchange or, deep, or, or even like virtual machines running on Hyper-V or even VMware uh, as well, and then back that up long-term to Azure. Sounds like a plan, my friend. Good. And then obviously we have like Azure backups, and as you mentioned, a couple of other workloads there as well mm -hmm. uh, to be to back up that, as you just mentioned. Uh, we also integrate to have a backup for SAP HANA uh, databases running in Azure VMs. Not as you mentioned, a ton of different Azure services right. uh, which can leverage that as well. You got it, man. So all Good. this is anchored around the recovery services vault. That's actually the next module that's coming up right now. Uh, do you yep. want to talk a bit about this first? Yeah, absolutely. So a recovery service vault, um, as we have in the description here, is actually your centralized place um, where you put in your or configure your backup, right? Uh, so if I scroll down here, uh, you can see here a, a print screen in the module itself, which you can look at. But I was thinking, why not just like directly look at this uh, in Azure itself? So if you go to Azure um, and then you go to and you search for recovery service vaults, you can see I have a couple of them already ready. And one is conveniently called the Learn TV Backup. Um, so no worries, this is not the backup of Learn TV. This is just <laughs> for myself. But you can see I did already set this up. It takes a couple of seconds to set it up. Uh, and then you have a lot of different management stuff going on. And what you can actually do here is very simple. When you want to start backing up things, you just hit this button here. and like as as the choices can be hard, right? Like you like you have like the Mars agent, you have workloads in Azure, you have the Azure backup server, and so on. Mm -hmm. It can be sometimes difficult. So we help you here uh, to actually choose which workloads you want to back up. So in my case, what I will show later on is how I actually do the backup of on-premises workloads. So I have right. some on-premises servers, and then I also have a question: Do what do I actually want to back up, right? Uh, and in my case, we're gonna <clears> do files and folders, that's what I want to back up. I want to just like my backup from my file server. So I'm going to select that. And then we, if you hit the prepare infrastructure button, it will actually tell you in this case, we recommend that you basically use the Windows server or Windows client like the Mars agent, uh, which you can download here. Mm -hmm. And then you can download and install that as well. Right. Now, simpler if you would choose, for example, some other workloads, if you want to back up like all together, maybe like VMware via virtual machines as well. In this case, it will tell you that you actually need to have the Azure backup server installed, right? And so you can actually go and download that and it will help you uh, to prepare your environment uh, as well. So let's go back quickly to the learn module itself. Uh, I can actually select, oh, there it is. Um, and then, so it's actually going through how you actually create one of these recovery service walls, right? I'm not going to do that. It's fairly simple. Um, as I showed you, you're going just to search for recovery uh, recovery service walls, and then you hit the add button. And as always, you need to select the subscription and the resource group you want to put this in, and you give it the name and the location uh, where you actually want to place this uh, yeah. service wall. Now, the location is important just usually because of two different reasons. One reason is because some people are very sensitive about data retention and where the data sovereignty happens to reside for the data. So if they want to make sure that everything stays in their country, make sure you choose a region inside of your country. If their regions and countries have two locations, so you'll have the geo-redundant storage, so you should be good to go. Um, the other thing you want to be con conscious of as well is potentially where you're protected assets are. So basically your, your entry point into Azure is in that same region just to try to prevent the traffic from having to go further distances. So obviously I'm not gonna go in and choose the European region if all of my stuff is over here in the west coast of America. 
in North America. That just wouldn't make sense. So that's where the region comes into play uh, and um, comes into play as well for the location of your VMs inside of Azure. Again, faster and simpler if they're inside the same region when you're trying to back them up than if you try to back them all the way up across the, the way and link someplace else and the fiber someplace else. Absolutely, absolutely. So this is where what you need to set up first. If you do want to do, use Azure Backup in any capacity, you need to set up an a, a Azure Recovery Vault um, to, to actually do that. Good. So do we want to have a quick look on implementing the Azure Backup policies? Like this is, this is interesting. Um, uh, obviously, what does actually policies mean, Rick? Um, mm -hmm. Like what, what are policies? Like it sounds... Like if, if you haven't really worked with backup, like what, what are the, the policies? Yeah, I mean, a policies perspective is really just think of your, your how, how frequently you want to back things up and also um, how long you want to keep things around. Those are two simplest things I can, I can suggest. You can create yep. as many policies as you want uh, and um, you're able to have different machines and snap to different policies that happen to be applied inside the Azure world uh, against your Azure VMs. And so potentially you might want to back up your production machines on a more regular basis, but your dev test machines, you maybe only want to back up maybe just like once in a blue moon, just in case you need to recover something for some reason, as opposed to having to go off and rebuild things. Uh, and so policy wise, uh, it allows you to go off and choose when snapshots and the systems are taken. It's important to note that these are incremental. Um, so when you take your original backup and then you have the different uh, snaps taking place, they're going to be incremental for the way that they're applied. The good thing is you don't have to worry about having to know where they are and what's going on. We handle all that in the back end as far as the service is concerned. Uh, awesome. Then the, the module deviates and goes from here from policy to so talking about the Mars agent specifically. I'm going to leave that to you to talk about because you're going to be demoing the Mars stuff uh, coming up. But the policies are very similar to what you'd be doing with the configuration of the Mars agent. Yeah, correct, correct. I'm going to show you actually how you set up a new policy for the Mars agent oh, okay. uh, in just a bit. Um, so one thing, um, like very simple, the Mars agent is super handy uh, if you want to use Azure Backup. And this is important to backup files and folders or system state. From This can be from on-premises uh, servers or from Azure VMs or even from VMs running at other cloud providers, right? And then it does actually back all this data up to Azure into the recovery vault uh, mm -hmm. and, and so on. And to set this up, as I showed you before, you can actually just go and hit this plus button and then it will show you here, as you can see on the print screen in the module itself, it will take you <clears throat> to exactly that step um, and it will show you that you can actually go and download this agent um, and then when you actually um, download it, you need to like run the installer and it will ask you uh, to register this with your Vault credentials, which you can also say download here, right? So you can directly download it from here. And this will make sure that your server is registered to the right recovery vault in Azure, right? That That's the connection there, how it does uh, uh, do that backup. And then from there on, and that's what we're going to do right now, is going to schedule a backup um, for the recovery vault, right? Because mm -hmm. now we just basically installed it. Um, and so let's let's just jump right in into um, this quick demo here. So here I have a server. This is nothing else than I think it's a Windows Server uh, 2022 20, already, but it obviously yep. works uh, with later versions of Windows or earlier versions of Windows Server as well. And after installing the Mars agent, I have this uh, little icon here. And if I load this, you can see here that this MMC console. Um, for Microsoft Azure Backup for the Mars agent show, uh, pops up. And you can see here I already set up one of my backups. Um, so you can see I have a couple of jobs which already did run. Some of them also failed. Um, but if you want to schedule now a new one, you would just go to this action panel on this side and then hit Schedule Backup. And you can also see, by the way, um, you can also do a t just in point on demand backup as well right. there. Um, if like you need back to. me up now kind of thing. Exactly. So here I, for example, I already, like, as you can see, I already set something up. Um, so I could actually now go and modify this for files and folders, or I could create a, a new back, backup schedule uh, for the system state, right? So for me, let's go through and modify the files and folder uh, stuff here as well. And again, this is, would be the same procedure. If you haven't set it up in, in at, at all, you can do the same thing. So um, let me quickly 
um, go here again. Mm -hmm. It tells you what do you want to do. You want to make backups to the, to the backup items or times or stop this schedule at all. In my case, we want to do make changes, right? Mm -hmm. So I can select here what I actually want to do backup. And so I want to back up the folder uh, called important files, because I obviously only have important files, which is on my C drive. <laughs> Very descriptive name. <laughs> it, it's important that you, so you exactly know what files you're going to back up, right? Um, um, and then you can obviously add more folders in and so on if you want to. Uh, you can also exclude certain file types and, and folders if you want to. And then the next thing is actually you would go and do the scheduling. So in this case, I'm just selected um, that I want to do a daily backup. And I can select, for example, the different times here. So I want one at 5.30, one at 12.30, and one at 9 o'clock, right? These are the times where I want to um, uh, take one, uh, do a snapshot, basically, of the files and have a, have a recovery uh, point uh, from these times available. So in case I delete something, like after lunch break, I will be still able to restore it from the morning. Right. And then I would go, and now this is important. This is now where we talk actually about retention rate, right? Uh, and we give you obviously a couple of different uh, options here. So you can, can see here, I can have a daily retention policy, weekly, monthly, and even yearly retention rate. And this is now set. For example, I want to have Saturday of last week of March at 5.30. Um, I want to keep that back up for at least 10 years, right? So I always be able to, to actually go down and, and restore uh, even like in nine years from now. And if I want to, again, I could go up here. I'm not going to press the button. It takes too long, but I could go up <laughs> until 99 years. Really uh, important files. You got to keep them around. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you never know when you need them, right? So um, you can, can absolutely go and do that and, and do that retention. Uh, and at the end, it basically just tells you, okay, is this what you want to do? Um, um, and you would obviously say, yes, finish. And yeah. that that's basically all the setup you need to do. And then it will tell you, ask you for an initial backup, right? So the initial backup you would usually do by default, you would use your internet connectivity. But if you don't have a good enough internet connectivity or you just have too much data to back it up, uh, then you can also use something called Azure Data Box, for example, um, to transfer uh, a large amount of, of data uh, on physical disks, basically. Uh, we also have something called the Data Box Heavy, which is still my favorite product of all time, uh, which is basically a big chunk of disk you can roll in a, in a little wagon that has like little wheels on it into the data center, and you can plug it into your network, copy yeah. all the data in it, and then send it back to our Azure Data Center and like transfer a big amount of data there, for example, for, for the initial backup uh, in that sense. Yeah, you're talking petabytes and petabytes of data with that data, the data box heavy for sure. Absolutely, it, absolutely. It is quite large to say the least. <clears throat> yep. So let me quickly switch back to the module itself. I know we have a lot of other things to cover. Um, so this is how you then set it up. Uh, and it, again, you can do like, you can, like if you go through the module, you can see here are a couple of other things you can obviously configure such as proxy settings and so on. But the module really covers uh, also the installation uh, process. And it also goes through the things I just showed you, for example, to set up the retention and policy here. For example, the screen I just showed you as well. Um, and then you can obviously go and have a look at this uh, in the Azure portal, which are this last thing I want to quickly show you uh, to actually show you how does that now show up in the Azure portal. So right. if I scroll down here, to back so, up so right, now, you, right now, you're just looking at the main information page for the recovery service vault, right? Exactly. So here I'm in the like main page of it. And here, obviously, I can do multiple things. And it's not that I need a recovery service vault for like every server I back up. I can like have multiple servers backing up to the same recovery vault, right. multiple services backing up as well. Um, and then I could actually go to like backup items. And now you can see here, in my case, I have this one agent, Azure Backup Agent deployed. And if I click on it, it will tell me, OK, hey, the state is actually good. The last backup worked. And I can actually find more information about this as well. So I know like, if I have a large amount of servers I back up, I can actually have that in a centralized place and see how the server uh, is actually doing. <laughs> now, I love the fact that you've got C backslash important files <laughs> resting on a server that's using a default auto-generated name of win dash blah, blah, blah. Why well, don't you use no one names like this? Files anywhere. 
you, you, that's that's like your fa my favorite like default name. All my servers are called like this. Like it's, it's generated automatically. I mean, that, that is awesome. If you can actually go back down and just under manage, uh, two levels down from where you are right now on the left hand side there, uh, yep. you want to click on that for backup policies. Yep. This is where you would configure the Azure policies for um, VMs that are running inside of Azure. So there's a default policy and there's a, di there's a, a default uh, hourly log backup policy as well. So I've gone in and created some policies in SARE uh, inside of mine. If you wanna switch over to my screen here for just a second. So I've, I've got my own Contoso Recovery Vault that I've created. So just like in Thomas's world, uh, I have it already backing up and restoring some VMs as well for backed up items. You can see that I've got one VM protected as well. But in this case, I'm protecting one of the boxes that I have properly named SRV01 uh, <laughs> inside of my world. Uh, and as well, inside that recovery vault, I can take a look at the policies that I established and they look surprisingly familiar. Here's the one I created called daily backups. Uh, surprisingly familiar to the settings, the second part of those settings that uh, Thomas showed you. The first part was simply back up this file uh, or back up this folder structure and this is what I wanna go through. This time here, it basically does an entire machine and the data disks as well, all at once through snapshots to then go through and then choose uh, how long do you wanna retain, retain your backups for? And I, I chose the defaults just like you did to say back me up on a weekly, on a monthly, and on a yearly basis up for 10 years. Uh, and it will go ahead and, and set it up for you. So it's all basically done and ready to go. Exact same process, except it's through the web interface. Now the difference is when I onboard new VMs inside of this, I can choose uh, how I want to go and actually have them backed up. So in that case, I have one machine already being backed up. My second machine, SRV02, this is the general overview page of that particular uh, box itself. But if I just go down here, to the bottom and choose backup. Except, did I go past it already? Or is it? There it is. If I choose backup, all I have to do is simply say, select my existing vault and then choose the recovery vault that I just showed you, and then choose the policy that I want to apply to it. And then it reminds me what the policy looks like. I, or I can even create a new policy on the fly if I have the appropriate rights. I simply say, enable backup. And that's going to go ahead and schedule a job to take place uh, and integrate this machine into that job environment, just like you would see slightly different interface than what you saw from the Mars interface when you do it through uh, the portal. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Perfect. So now I think, interestingly, the next after setting up these policies, you obviously want to see mm -hmm. how we can actually recover certain types of backup, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that, that's also what the unit covers now. Its next one is Windows Server IIS Virtual Machine, Recover Windows IIS Virtual Machines. And there obviously there's different ways of doing that, right? Um, not just as you mentioned before, this is just one part of like a good disaster recovery strategy. One mm -hmm. is the VM backups. And then you also have other services, which by the way, also like for example, for Azure Site Recovery, it also uh, leverages the recovery vaults uh, as well uh, for doing like disaster recovery scenarios as well. And then for disks, we also offer like some, something like managed snapshots uh, in that case as well. So you went already through uh, the backup scenario. Um, do you want to have another look at this, or is that what you already showed us uh, in this case? Um, well, I showed you how to go off and do the the actual configuration of the backup um, on an Azure VM and how to add a new one into it as well. Pretty simple stuff to be able to go off and do the consistency. Let's actually go through and on my portal machine over here, uh, I have my recovery vault, which is currently underway and working supposedly. So let's actually go take a look and take a, see what these um, backups are looking like if I actually go through and see. So if I choose backup, oh, sorry, I've already configured that one, my backup infrastructure. Sorry, that's the backup infrastructure for the endpoints. The backed up items, see how, how we're progressing. That's what I want to try to get to. <laughs> Finally, here's the interface. Um, SRV01, you can see, is already backed up. Uh, and then we have SRV02 is saying, warning, initial backup is currently pending. But basically, that machine is in the process of being configured to be backed up. It has not had its initial one completed as of yet. Uh, in this case, this one's not going to complete until later this evening because it's not supposed to run until 9 p.m. 
uh, but you can basically come through and see the, st the status of that particular machine, if it's working or not, uh, if it's finished or not. So this will be updated eventually as it comes through. Uh, I don't know about your important data, if you have lots of data inside of there, but I put some demo data inside these different systems uh, and they're good to go. Um, an interesting thing, if you haven't had a chance to look at, again, you had the Mars agent installed. Um, as far as how does this look on a VM inside of Azure on the client side or on the server side of things, in case you needed to log on interactively to it, um, there's actually not much to see. I'll just actually show you my SRV01 box here as an example. Uh, when I log in over here, <clears throat> and then bring the VM to this side, so you can actually see it. There we go. So this is my SRV01 box that's currently up and running, just to show you where my data happens to be, because this is more so for the uh, recovery piece of things I'll be showing you in just a little moment here. But I'll just show you that I do have a, a separate data drive. So it's not just the OS drive. I've got a separate data drive that I've mapped as drive Z on my individual box. I've got some shares and I have a bunch of different files and demo files that I just threw in there uh, to be able to prove that I do have some data that exists on this individual box. Uh, I've got some pictures um, and I've got some ever important stuff as well as far as demo files are concerned. So let's actually go through and just delete that and then empty the machine's recycle bin as well, just to kind of create the problem that we have that we'll do the recovery in a future step that's coming up. But there's no thing that I can configure on the individual box itself. That's all done through the Azure Management Portal uh, and done through um, the Recovery Vault as well to set up and enable uh, backing up of this particular VM. There's no client software to install. There's no agents to install. It uses the Azure VM agent. It's actually a good point to mention. If you migrate a VM from on-premises up into Azure, if you don't have the Azure VM agent installed on it, um, you won't be able to use Azure Backup without having it correctly installed. So the documentation does tell you about, hey, make sure you install the Azure agent on that individual VM so that we can manage it and configure it uh, remotely using this individual box. So that's all I wanna show you right now. I've deleted a folder. We'll come back and look at that when it comes time to do a restore in just a little bit. Uh, and that's kind of all I wanted to show from simply the backup side of things uh, on the portal differences versus what you see with a full-fledged piece of software with Mars installed uh, on an individual VM down in the on-premises world. Yeah, that makes a lot of makes a lot of sense. Again, like yeah, as you mentioned, it's already the, using the VM agent. Uh, mm -hmm. which is already like pet or like on the machine itself if you deploy an Azure VM. Right. Now, what could be interesting if you actually migrate in some cases, if you might, depending on how you migrate your service to Azure, there's no VM agent installed in that machine. In that case, you need to like manually go and install install that. But that's you again, like depending on what tool you're using to migrate, uh, you will have that mach that uh, VM agent present. Um, what I also quickly want to point out because it's an important part here as well, and you mentioned that before, by default, we're using um, geo-redundant storage, GRS, mm -hmm. right? Uh, for your uh, backups, like for your recovery world where the data is stored. And you can obviously go and change that to, like, as you said, local redundant storage. Now, I want to highlight one important point here, and I will show you also where you can actually go and do that. Uh, and so if you log in into um, your recovery service world and you go to properties, uh, you can scroll down and then on the backup configuration, you can go to update. Mm -hmm. And here is on the top, you can see here um, changing the storage uh, replication type. And you can also see that there's a new point coming uh, or is there already there is some redundant storage. Now, what is important here to notice is, and for you to know before you set everything up, if you want to have something different than geo redundant storage, you need to change this before you actually back something up to Azure, right? So that that is why it's now grayed out because I already right. backed up something up, so I cannot change it after the fact. So that is something really important. Um, configure that first, make your plan first, what you need to do, and then um, go and and do that. So going down down here, um, you showed us already like what is in this module, how to actually configure the backup, and I saw that you just deleted. Uh, some very important files, which, by the way, look way more important than my files. Um, <laughs> so um, 
there's also obviously then like the, the other part, parts of backup, which is probably even more important than the backup itself is actually the restore of your data, right? Um, and so we want to have definitely a look at how you can actually restore uh, wow. files here, uh, for example, or, or a whole Azure VM as well. And you showed us already on the Azure VM that you deleted a couple of files, which you might want to recover. Mm -hmm. Um, do you want to do this now at this point? Or do you want us to wait for a little bit longer in the modules? Just because we they do can, kind of bounce around between topics inside the modules? We can do that uh, absolutely later on as well. Okay. Uh, the next thing is like obviously disk level backup and restore. So we also have the capabilities to not just like um, do backups on like file uh, basis, but then also do it on disk level backups. Um, so if you want to do a restore of a virtual machine, complete virtual machine, you can do that. Uh, as well, um, and so that is also an important point to mention that we we, we actually offer that um, uh, as well. Right. Good. So should we go on to the next unit here and actually yeah, like to keep on collecting those points, my friend? Exactly. Exactly. And there are another one hundred. So that's you that's good. Um, so <laughs> I already showed you um, how you can, for example, like set up and schedule a backup uh, using the Mars agent, right? And again, we, we explained this here. Again, it goes through um, uh, how you actually do this and how you can set this up. But as I mentioned before, you could also go, and if I switch quickly to my demo here, um, here's my machine again. And if you want to do a backup now, because now you're in a state where you did actually change something and you actually want to keep that, you could just hit the backup now button. And then you can select again, what do I want to backup? Um, and then retain the data until, let's do until, uh, yeah, a year almost, or no, not a year, sorry, a month. Uh, it's more or less a month now. Let's nice. keep it a month. And then um, actually, again, obviously, because I already configured that, I can say backup now. And this is how I manually can now do a, a backup uh, of these files again, right? And this will, again, take, take a snapshot uh, of that volume. Uh, again, and then transfer the changes um, to that specific uh, endpoint as well. As you can see here, it's not a lot. I don't have so many important data, uh, files as I would love to have, but uh, at least I can back them up. And you can see here that <laughs> creates a new recovery point uh, for that specific scenario. Nice. So with that, let's go back into the module. Uh, so this was like the the scenario how how I can do it like like an on demand. Uh, file and then obviously as I mentioned recovery also of files so I can actually go out and restore these files so I just like the module goes only very quickly into the, into that um, on on this case here uh, but let's have a look on the other on the next page here on the next unit um, how we're going to do that so here we are actually like okay what what if I want to do perform backup or restore up on premises workloads and again we talked about the March Mars agent. Um, again, it goes again in what I just showed you now with modifying the storage replication and that you actually should do that uh, up front uh, before you actually create the backups. Right. Um, that's also why I showed it to you <laughs> up front because we obviously have backups already in, in this, in this uh, thing. Um, and the module also again mentions, hey, if you want to do on-premises backups, um, download and install and register the Mars agent. Again, we went through this uh, before. And then, um, as I just did, we can run an on-demand backup. And now, what I actually want to show you is how you can, for example, uh, restore files you, um, on Windows Server using the Mars agent, right? Right. And again, so, the module. I was going to say, what well, you can do the Mars agent for the restore process here, and then when you're done that one there, that's when I'll jump in and show you how to do the restore from the VMs inside the Azure world because it doesn't use the Mars agent. So that's when I'll jump yep. in. Yeah. Sounds sounds like a deal. So again, the module went, goes through and explains exactly step by step uh, how you should do that. So in my case, it also explains you what happens in the background. So you can actually go out and, and see uh, what recovery points uh, to mount and then actually go and, and restore uh, these, um, these files from there. Uh, you can then also browse it from your file explorer um, and, and see where you can actually go and restore them. So. You can also obviously go ahead, go again, and this is important what I mentioned before. Uh, you can also restore that in a different machine, right? What what happens if, for example, the whole machine is lost? Um, in that case, you can also go and, and do that recovery 
uh, on, on another machine as well, which is, is kind of important. And again, there is also important that you keep that key phrase, which I mentioned before, uh, very safe, because that is what you need to actually then uh, configure that backup as well. Now, let me jump quickly in into like my environment here. And so if I'm back here, so let me quickly show you what important files I have here. So if I go here, I have here a new file and there is my important file. So let's delete the my important file here. Um, so it's gone. Uh, and then I can now go and say, recover that data. And again, I will select here. I want to recover that on this server. Again, fantastic server names, um, nice. make it very easy. And then I can select here, what do I actually want to restore? One of the system state, volume, a whole volume, or just the individual files and folders. In my case, I just want to restore that specific file. And I want to select the volume where I want to restore or where I had the backup. And you can see here in like, I'm not sure how great you can see it, but there are like bold numbers here, like the dates, like from, for okay. example, Tuesday. Yep. So I can select, for example, let's go and look back to Tuesday. And then I have here the different times when the backup was actually running. And then I can mount that recovery point. And that will take a moment, obviously. Um, can it up take a few minutes? But we will we'll see if, it, if it's fast, because again, I don't have so many important files. Um, but in case it takes too long, we can quickly switch to you until uh, it mounted that recovery point. Um, but this will now mount that point, so I can actually then go in and copy that file, well, have a look at that file, and then if it's the file I want to restore, I can actually go and restore it, right? It's not just going to like just restore everything in that case. So you can see here I have a browse option. And so if I go this, I can have a look at this, and you see now it mounted a this folders here uh, on the e in the e volume or with the e drive name, and you can see here these are basically the files. From that specific point in time, you can also see here the, 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 the time here for that one. And so I'm going to just collect, copy that file. Let's do that. Let's do it that way. Uh, copy. Then I go back to my C drive. And now I go to my important files. And now I can go and paste it. And now I have my file again restored. And as I mentioned, you could obviously look at this file before that. Um, uh, to see if it's really like the right data in it. So for example, if you think about it's a Word document and you added and edited a couple of things, you probably, like your user probably know which, what, like, uh, what, is the, what is the content of that file. So you can even mm -hmm. do, before you restore it, you can do a check, right? I mean, now I restored the file because it was lost or deleted, but obviously you could also go and like change the version of that file and it's still existing. Right. That's important to note that this works both on Windows Server boxes and also on Windows Client boxes, too. You can have this installed on Windows 11, Windows 10. Uh, as long as it's 64-bit operating system, you're good to go uh, for the agent to install, to be able to go through this process. Um, do you want me to show them how I do it on my side, just to, at this point? Or do you have anything you want to finish up here first? No, that's, that sounds absolutely good. I just want to add one point. Like People okay. will probably ask, why would you do it on a client side? Uh, because you obviously you want to have your the data uh, data like stored like centrally on a file server or uh, on SharePoint or OneDrive or Teams or wherever you have your data. Um, in, in in a couple of scenarios, you have these VIPs, right? You have like the the executives of your company. They probably have their laptops. They're working from home. They're working on the road, um, and they sometimes store files wherever they want to. So you can actually go out and back up these machines. So just in case something happens to these VIP machines, um, it, it can be like restored as well. And the same thing obviously is also for lab machines and stuff like that, which like to process local files as well. Uh, very handy to do that. Right. Excellent. <clears throat> well, oh, show uh, me how you do that in yeah, Azure. Sure. So from this side of things, again, these are two VMs inside of Azure uh, that are running Windows Server in this case. Uh, backed up items, I can see I've got my two machines that are protected. Uh, one of them, as I mentioned, I just configured earlier today, so it's not done its backup as of yet, but the other one has been, which is SRVR1. And then when I choose that particular one, I can say, give me a file recovery. So I could go through and do a restore VM, and it will actually restore the VM and the data disks inside of a different area on Azure. So it does not overwrite the original. It literally mm -hmm. will create you a special resource group that it puts the VM and the pieces inside of it to be able to go off and take a look at it if you need to diagnose it. Or you can do a file recovery, which is what I'm going to go ahead and do for this one here, for file recovery. 
And uh, I get to, first of all, choose my backup point that I want to do. Um, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and choose the one that was at 11 p.m. Uh, last night, as an example here in Pacific Time. I then I'm going to say, here is the script to mount the disks, just like you saw with, uh, with, with what uh, Thomas did, to mount up the drives on the local machine wherever the script is run. It's going to be creating the secure connection up to the Azure Recovery Vault to basically mount those drives. And I want to show you a bit behind the scenes of what goes on, because it generates the script specifically. It generates a secure SaaS token that it uses to access the storage account and that sort of stuff as well. It allows me to download that executable when it's done generating. And then it gives you this really god-awful, ugly, long password that you have to know. And so um, that long password, you have to somehow get it available to give to someone uh, or to uh, make it available to someone through an email, through whichever it happens to be. It's, it's this big, long alphanumeric character that they're going to give you uh, that's unique to this particular instance. So in the background, what it's doing is it's preparing and mounting those individual storage volumes that are in the back end, and then makes it available. There we go. Uh, makes it available to, to go to this custom script. Uh, I, I can see uh, uh, our admin people in the chat, so the various different uh, feeds coming in. No, no, don't send an email. It's, okay, <laughs> don't send an email. This is just a demo environment, but here we go. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and download this individual script file that's unique to this environment. <clears throat> and that is going to be one thing that I bring over. Second thing I'm going to bring over is the password to run the script. So here is my VM inside the Azure Data Center. Notice it has the missing file on it. I'm going to go in and copy over, because I'm using an RDP connection on this particular box. Uh, so I'm going to say copy that individual file. And then this is the script file that was copied over and created uniquely by my Azure experience inside the portal. The second thing I need to have is the password specifically. So if I minimize this back down again, here is the password. I'm going to copy it to my clipboard and then go back into my virtual machine. And I'm going to launch this individual box, so the script. And it warns me and says, hey, please make sure you've got the password for the portal. Type it in and press enter. So I'm going to say edit and paste for this demo environment. Isn't that a lovely long password to be able to have to remember and type in? So I guess you could call the person and like read this over the phone. <laughs> that would be more secure than an email. Right, Pierre? Is that what you want? <laughs> Press enter. Uh, and then it goes through and runs a PowerShell script. And the PowerShell script is um, going through and connecting up to it. It says I need to unmount some volumes and connecting. I'm going to say, yep, go ahead and unmount these. Press Y. And the reason why it gave me an error message is because I ran this demo last night uh, and it's now fixing that because the mount points were created um, last night. They're active for so many days, but they're unique to the password. So basically you can give this package and give the password to the individual that has to restore the files. Uh, and it will then go ahead and, um, there we go, it's now working. It'll then go ahead and uh, leave them running uh, so that you can attach up to them again if you need to, because you missed some files for that initial recovery piece. But the neat thing is here, take a look at this. It actually is using an iSCSI mount point remotely on the Azure side. That's what the server actually attaches up to. So these are going to show up as an iSCSI disk uh, on my actual box itself. Uh, and then it's going to warn me, hey, by the way, three volumes have been created for your partitions. You've got your, your data partition, you've got your system reserve partition, and you've got your Windows partition as far as drives that are mounted. Uh, and you're good to go. So now if I go back over here, there's the licenses for people that have been using this. Here, if I take a look at my Windows PC uh, environment for Explorer, I now have my F, H, uh, and uh, G drives, which are what's called. So obviously on my F drive, sorry, my, my H drive for Windows, this is my operating system disk. That is not where those files happen to exist, but that's the point in time from last night. I actually want the data drive, separate drive that was created. And then there is my shares folder. And then there is the marketing folder. And if I open up another instance of Explorer to show you my existing system over here, this is my existing Z drive, which is where my data is. This is my shares. And notice the marketing is not there. All I have to do is simply copy this guy here, paste him over here. And then nice. my files come across. 
and he's now back up and ready to go. And those drives are mounted. Uh, so I could go back and, and research back and forth if I needed to, if I uh, needed to pull, go off and pull off some other drives. After the recovery, to remove the disks and close their connection to the recovery points, simply click on Unmount Disks step in the portal. So I can close off this script because I don't need it anymore. I could continue to, to work on this individual system. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go and unmount those drives, which is this one right here. And that basically terminates the iSCSI connection that you were using to have those drives mounted. Um, but they will stay present so that you could reconnect back up to them again if you need to. Uh, but for now, it's just going to disconnect them. It takes a little bit of time. Uh, and then what I find is about a minute or so, you'll actually see the drive start to disappear on the client system that's running that uh, mounting script. So there we go. The mount was successful, is being unmounted. Coming back over here. If I take a look at my machine, you can see that already my PC is running. I have the uh, G drive still mounted, the H drive still mounted, but they will eventually just drop off. The data drive is already gone. Uh, I'm going to get an error message here in just a little bit saying these drives no longer exist, uh, and they will disappear from my box. I'll go back to just having my C drive, my D drive, and then my Z drive will show up on this individual box. So. That'll take a little bit of time nice. to clean up, but that's essentially it. It's an iSCSI mount, encrypted connection to your storage to copy the files down and off as you need them. They stay active for seven days, as they mentioned in the warning messages. You can extend them if you need to, uh, but the idea is you unmount them when you're done, similar to what you do with the Mars agent, just slightly different experience for here inside of the portal itself. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, good old iSCSI to the rescue. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, by the way, it's, it's encrypted traffic between the system and the termination point, the mounting point, uh, up inside the Azure space. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I also want to mention there's Alexander, uh, who, first of all, like, has a couple of comments. First of all, he says, like, uh, Azure Backup is perfect. So happy kudos to that. Absolutely. We'll definitely share that with the Azure Backup team as well. They're going to be definitely happy about this. But then he also had a very, very good question. Um, is there anything ransomware protection behind the Azure Backup solution? I want, um, and basically what he means is actually, so is there something which can help us detect ransomware? Right, like that, like what happens is like, obviously probably it's already working uh, in the background and we obviously take snapshots of that over time mm -hmm. and we don't want that, right? And so, yes, there is. There's actually a whole page uh, describing, um, and we, we can definitely share the links in the comments, um, how Azure Backup can actually like help in cases or, or, or help in cases to backup and restore and plan for, protecting against ransomware, right? Mm -hmm. um, and there is obviously a lot of like tools where not just like in, in general, not Azure Backup detects this, but we have some some systems like, for example, Microsoft Defender for cloud mm -hmm. um, or Microsoft Defender for endpoint or um, as well, uh, which can help detect ransomware. And then together, for example, with Microsoft Sentinel uh, can basically send you alerts when something like that is going on in your environment, because you don't just want to protect against ransomware, right? There's also a ton of other security related um, issues uh, which you want to take care of. And so those are great ser Azure services which you can leverage there uh, as well to actually find out. But also just to quickly go back to like, okay, with Azure Backup, obviously when you have an Azure Backup recovery point, that recovery point is protected in that case that no one can actually go and just like mess around with it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. So you just showed us basically how you can restore files and recover files in Azure VM. Very, very simple. Um, you can obviously use the same setup um, uh, also to restore whole machines as well. And so in the last unit, we actually just have a video uh, about all of this stuff we just showed you. So if you want to have a look at how to um, manage Azure Virtual Machine backups with Azure Backup Service, um, you can actually go out and check out that video uh, and learn what, what we just showed here, have a little bit more uh, details on that um, as well. Yeah, and, but as we mentioned at the very beginning of all this, the setup that we did for this demo environment is actually very, very simple. If you just have an Azure free subscription, um, you can create a recovery vault um, within that free subscription, and then you can go and configure the Mars agent download talking to that recovery vault to run on a lab machine or on some machine you have on premises. There's no 
fancy VPN required. There's no fancy configuration of some kind of express route required. This will just use uh, network connectivity over the internet if you want it to, uh, to be able to go off and to back up the on-premises machines. Those machines could be virtual, they could be physical. I mean, technically they could even be in a different hyperscale cloud provider if you wanted to as well. It doesn't matter where they are. It's an agent that installs, that dials back into the backup, the recovery um, services vault. So that's how it works. And in the Azure space, all I did was make some VMs. Uh, very simple to spin up a VM of whatever type you like. It'll go off and to do backups and snapshots. The one thing I did not show you, we don't have we don't have the time or the demo built up to do this today, is doing a recovery of an entire VM. I chose to say back up the file, but all it would do is basically pre-create and hydrate a VM using the backup snapshot image uh, of the system that is in question in a different resource group. So it does not conflict with your production system in case you need to go off and do some forensics on the box or do some other stuff on that box. Uh, you can have a fully working system that's an identical to that snapshot available and deployed in a custom resource group. And you can even name those custom resource groups if you want to with a certain naming convention when you create the uh, recovery vault. So pretty nice. simple stuff. It's an extra layer of protection. They don't cover it in this particular learn module, but it's something you might want to know for your own proper disaster recovery kind of conversation that you have. Absolutely, absolutely. No, that that's great stuff. And again, also there's like obviously like we just scratched the surface here. I mean, it mm -hmm. comes it comes in terms of Azure backup, right? Oh, as we, as we saw. I was just going to say we should probably talk about cost, not for how much this costs, but obviously you're going to be paying for the backup storage for where things are. So if Thomas's ultra important files need to stick around for 99 years, <laughs> that's obviously going to take up an awful lot more storage space over time. And your storage costs will gradually start to rise as more instances and more snapshots are taking place uh, in those individual systems. So just be aware of that, um, that uh, the longer your policies are, the more the storage costs of the backup side of things happen to, to cost. But as Thomas mentioned at the very beginning, there is no cost for network egress. So outbound stuff down to the restore of your local box or ingress into Azure. That's included with the cost of backing up the VMs. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Those are important parts. And again, there's a ton of auto services, as you could see, uh, where we um, uh, would go out and say, hey, um, uh, like what you can back up, right? And again, mm -hmm. we didn't show the Azure backup server. Um, there's much more capabilities in that as well. But should we actually go and transfer to the knowledge uh, check here as well. You just want to get the last bit of the points that you want to do. So make sure we do the check here in the slides, but then you have to go back and finish it off so you get the extra 200 points. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, let's see how we do. Again, we're on a delay. If you can, we've got um, uh, the ability to take your, your suggested answers. We'll, we'll go through this, but we'll wait until everyone has a chance to go through and read the screen before we show you what the answer happens to be. Um, how about if I take the first one? You take the first one. Okay, so Larissa is responsible for implementing server workloads backups at Contoso. She wants to implement an on-premises backup to an Azure Recovery Vault service. What does Larissa need to do on the Windows servers that she wants to back up? So these are the servers that are on-premises. What does she have to do to those servers if she wants to go off and back them up? A is going to go and have Larissa download and install the Mars agent and then register that particular server uh, by installing with the Vault credentials. B, Larissa must download and install the Mars agent. And C, Larissa doesn't need to do anything. Windows servers contain all the required agents for inclusion in the recovery services vault. Hmm, let me see here. What That's was involved so for this one here? It's, it's to be honest, I, the question is actually fairly simple, but then the answer options can be a little bit tricky, to be honest. Right, right. So I, I always go by elimination. Like if I'm doing a Microsoft exam, I do the same thing. I eliminate the obvious one. So I'm willing to bet that everyone has said that C, yeah, that's not right. Otherwise, we wouldn't even be here talking about this. So C is not the case. You actually do have to go and install something. So C is not the option. That leaves you with an A and B, 50-50 chance. The crowd is going wild. And so far, one person has answered with an A. Uh, and then no one's coming up with B, but these are very similar. The only difference between them is 
One's download and install, and one is download, install, and then configure credentials. Hmm. I think I remember seeing you do something there, uh, Mr. Thomas. What would you say? I definitely mention it. I definitely yes. mention it. Um, like this is like obviously if you just like install the agent, if you download the agent and install the agent, then um, where does it actually transfer the data to? Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, at some point you actually need to identify which Azure subscription, which recovery world you want to be, and that is where what's done in the registration process. So with that, I would say A is. The correct answer, Rick. So you did a fantastic job there. Nice. Congratulations. Like elimination, my friend. I like elimination. Good job. <laughs> Good job, so Alexander. And also uh, Andrew, I think it is. Yep. Both of them came up with A inside the chat stream that I can see here. Yep. Absolutely. So let's have a look at the next one. And so the next one is after creating Contoso, again, great company, uh, Contoso's recovery world service, Larissa discovers that she wants to change the storage replication type to local redundant. In which situation can Larissa change the storage replication type? So that is actually like where, okay, where we talked about very briefly oh, yeah. um, about how you do this, right? Mm -hmm. So A, Larissa can change the setting at any time. B, Larissa can change the setting, but only before a recovery world service starts providing protection for items. Or C, Larissa cannot change the setting at any time. So, um, I'm going to use my my uh, definitely not this answer strategy, and I'm going to once again say that C. It'd be rather restrictive, I think, if right. you can never change this ever. So C is not the choice. Would definitely make a silly question if if C would uh, was C would be right. That's right. That's what I want. Who writes these things? So the other thing is because I I showed you this. I mean, it's also that like unfortunately. Unfortunately, I say it's not A, because you can't just change it all the time. Like we, there's no mechanism like at the end how you can change it. So in my opinion, I would say it's B. I, I would I would agree with you for sure because that was what I remember your demo showing us was that uh, it was grayed out because we had already started to provide backup solutions. And again, this is something that you need to think of because. We charge more for geo redundant storage than we do for locally redundant storage. But again, you have less protection in case one of the region uh, pairs happens to go offline or get wiped out by a snowstorm or by a, a flood or something like that for some reason. So geo redundant literally means like north, south, east, west kind of redundancy where it is um, significantly farther apart. Uh, than um, having them in the same zone. We don't talk about zones in this environment. This does not support zonal stuff. It's only between locally redundant and geographically redundant storage. <clears throat> so I'm Good. seeing here, we got some folks that got it right. Mr. Angie McCallum, congratulations. That was a good answer there. Uh, I think Alexander also got it as well. Fantastic. Some people are playing along with us. It's good to have this interaction. I even yep. see uh, our good friend and, and partner in crime here, Mr. Wired Canuck, Pierre from last week is helping us out by answering questions inside the chat. So thank you, Pierre. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Number, number three, doing I'll something useful. Here. <laughs> Larissa has been archiving and tidying up unneeded backup data. Uh, she has just removed some backup data from the Azure backup. She has been informed that this removed data is actually required to restore some damaged files. Maybe there was a ransomware attack or something like that. Who knows? And uh, they were deleted. What are Larissa's options? Uh, a, Larissa can do nothing about it. The backup is unrecoverable. <laughs> I love that. That would um, be sad. B, Larissa can recover the re removed backup files data for up to 14 days after deletion. So basically you've deleted the instance of the backup of that particular VM in question. Or C, Larissa can recover the removed backup data for up to 21 days after deletion. So we've got one highly implausible I one. And then I, two are the uh, are the options I think here. I, I feel sorry for people who joined us late because I think you mentioned that very early on. You explained exactly that uh, when we went through the learn module. Right. Um, and I have some thoughts here, but again, let's let's do it the way um, uh, as we did it for all the other ones. Uh, I would again, as I mentioned, it would be very sad if it would be A. So I don't think it's A. Mm -hmm. I would definitely not say as I. And then the question really comes down, is it 
14 days or 21 days. So two weeks or three weeks. And so this is actually a tough one here, uh, I would say, <laughs> uh, in terms of if you didn't listen. But however, you didn't hear at the very beginning. Exactly. If you didn't yeah. hear it, uh, we want to know. So also people in the chat want to know. Yeah. Um, so be honest, I, I, I obviously listen to my boss uh, all the time. <laughs> Uh, so it's definitely B, 14 days. Yeah. And 14 days deletion recovery is possible uh, with your system. Very, very good. Now, let's actually make sure Thomas gets his appropriate scores. And so can you flip over to the website on Microsoft Learn because you've been following along with us. And let's make sure he chooses the right answers on the Microsoft Learn site. Absolutely. Congratulations there again. Eric joined us and so is Andrew as well. Alexander, so on the knowledge checks, again, notice in the top right-hand corner, it's gray, 200 points are on the line right now. So let's help uh, Thomas out. The first question answer was A, which is the first one. Yep, the that second was. answer, the second question, talking about the recovery vault service, changing the storage types, that was a B. And then you said it was B for as well, 14 day recovery, uh, and then hit check your answers. And that just gives them, boom score now here's it i'm going to give you some insider scoop here this was the first time that thomas answered the question he got all three of them correct it was originally 200 points but he got 400 points yes you didn't know if you get all the questions right in a knowledge check you actually get two times the points Woo yep, yep. Uh, That's so important part. It, and... if you're trying to compete against your peers and your friends take your time to answer those questions and then get them right to get the maximum number of points and double them uh, by getting them right the first time. Yep, absolutely. That that obviously is like a smart thing to do. I mean, obviously you could click through all this and then just figure out the right ones, right? Yep. But you need to actually take it serious so you get double the points as a reward uh, for, for doing and, that. And the tip for that one there is go for elimination and then choose the ones that are there. Go ahead and hit continue there, my friend. Bum, 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 bum. <sighs> and then it takes you off to the last one for the summary. The reason why I mention that is because there's another 100 points if you look at the summary and then scroll down to the bottom uh, of that particular page to make sure that you've actually completed and seen that whole thing. Scroll down, scroll down, come on. There you go. Unlock achievement. That gets you your total scores that are there. Uh, and you're now basically done. And yeah, rate it. Did you like this module or did you not like the module? Let us know. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's give it a great. Let's give it a fair, uh, a, a good good rating. There was some stuff that needed to be kind of cleaned up in there. Uh, it's not too bad. And you can even and leave a comment. Yep, um, highly recommend doing that. I will obviously spend some time later on to do that and to yeah. give you a nice comment about this. Um, but again, uh, if we have just a quick look uh, again about the summary, uh, if I switch back here to the slides, uh, what did we look at today? We obviously had a look at Azure Backup in general. We talked yep. a lot about that. Um, we showed you how uh, you actually implement recovery vaults and what they are for. Rick showed you how you actually implement Azure Backup policies on the Azure side of things. I was basically demoing you how you do Azure uh, like policies on the on-prem machines. And then we recovered Windows IaaS VMs or files from Windows IaaS VMs mm -hmm. uh, in that case. So we did definitely a lot here um, to do that. And then obviously, uh, if you look at like what we also did, is perform file folder recovery, um, backup, perform a backup and recovery from premises workloads, as well as, as explaining um, how Azure VM backups uh, or how to manage Azure VM backups with Azure Backup. So what yeah. I actually want to show you again is this link here again if you just joined us on the stream and you want to go through that module and you want to do it yourself you want to get the points yourself you want to go through all these questions again you want to learn and go into details into what we just showed you here is the link and you also have a qr code here on the page itself where you can scan and then uh, put it up uh, you can that do that today you can do it tomorrow or over over uh, your vacation days uh, <laughs> or during work i mean uh, and learn about um, uh, hybrid backup uh, uh, in Azure. Yeah, and I do want to shout out to all the folks that have been helping us out and chatting with us inside the chats. We do actually read the chats, Mr. Hendox C on Twitch. Uh, we're just delayed. We can't actually see them live as they go. I'm glad to see that you're actually doing some uh, competition amongst your different friends around how many learn points you happen to have on Microsoft Learn. 
But uh, Alexander was great coming back and asking us questions about stuff, uh, even getting some ideas on connecting with us. After the fact, we have an IT Ops Talk Discord server that we hang out on, answer questions on. Andrew McCallum, you've been solid helping us out and going through all these different hybrid modules with us throughout the last couple of weeks. So thanks for sticking around uh, and doing some stuff. Um, and um, for all the other people, I think we had people that were joining us today from Colombia, I noticed, also from uh, the Nigerian Delta region as well. Cool stuff. It's a lot of fun putting these different uh, options on. There are more Learn Live sessions that are going to be coming up in a variety of topics. Uh, and uh, on some of the links that we shared there on Learn TV, you can see future series that are coming up. This one wraps up the series that we did specifically on hybrid learning. Uh, so um, it was a lot of fun going through the stuff that we did. Uh, and I had a great chance uh, getting, being able to connect up and touch base with my friend Thomas. I don't think we've really kind of presented like this before, have we? No, I think that was like the first real time we, we did something together. But she also, did, to be honest, it didn't really like presenting. It was more like learning together about Azure Backup. And again, um, I only can say this again, like this again was the last episode, as Rick mentioned. But if you have like missed other episodes, if you're not like Andrew and saw all of them, uh, we obviously have a link here uh, where you can actually see and go back to all the episodes uh, we already recorded on different topics. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can actually go through all these hybrid infrastructure uh, study hall uh, episodes and then learn about that as well. Right. We have a last couple of moments left before the official stream actually goes off and ends. If you do have any questions about backup and restore using Microsoft Azure Backup or on-premises, we're happy to answer them. Um, other than that, I'm, uh, I'm kind of good. Oh, I get to see... Alexander is actually uh, coming into us from Brazil. That's kind of cool. Uh, nice. Amari is uh, 10 o'clock at night from France. Bonne nuit, monsieur. À la prochaine. Uh, we'll, we'll chat again at some point in time. And um, yeah, man, uh, it was great hanging out with you. And again, our friend Jason behind the scenes helping us out. He hosts and works on uh, Hello World on Learn TV. Going to be kicking up and doing some more episodes of that in the new year. Um, do, you, do you have any ideas on other topics, possibly, that we should be covering as like a series like we did here? We can go off and create some in the new year. Let us know in the chat. Let us know. Yep, absolutely. I saw already some comments that like someone wants to know more about Azure Arc. Mm -hmm. I'm absolutely happy to help there. <laughs> you need to have um, another seven hours of streaming time for uh, Thomas to stop talking about <laughs> Azure Arc because uh, he's uh, very well versed in it. But yeah, Rick is right. Let us know what you want to hear, what you want to learn about. Uh, we will definitely make sure that we can help you there, um, bring the right content for you. And uh, again, also, thank you very much for joining from my site. Uh, it was a pleasure, uh, a lot of interaction, which I loved. Uh, I hope everyone learned something. Uh, I definitely did. And uh, I hope Rick too. So uh, <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Rick, for joining tonight. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for watching. Yep. Thanks a lot. Thank you.